The Utica Avenue line, like many other subway extensions, has been proposed since the early 1900s. Actually, the Utica Avenue line was first proposed during the planning of the IRT Eastern Parkway line. It was proposed several times in the Transit Authority's 1968 expansion proposals, and even as recently as 2015 by former NYC Mayor Bill de Blasio. So just what is this branch, and what importance would it serve to the New York City Transit Network? Be sure to like the video and subscribe for more content like this in the future. The Utica Avenue line is a subway extension planned to branch off of the IRT Eastern Parkway line at the Crown Heights Utica Avenue station and head south down Utica Avenue. In its multiple proposals, the line was supposed to have between two and four tracks. Some proposals saw the line branching off of the Canarsie line, others off of the Fulton Street line, and even as a branch of the 2nd Avenue line. But considering how long it took just to build Phase 1 of the 2nd Avenue subway, the world would have probably ended by then. The main proposal from the IRT is what's most likely to happen, and therefore is the one I'll be focusing on in this video. In my opinion, it should be a two-track elevated line running down Utica Avenue to the King's Plaza Mall. I propose stops at Empire Boulevard, Church Avenue, Clarendon Road, Kings Highway, Farragut Road, where there will be a connection to the IBX, Avenue L, Flatlands, and a final station at Kings Plaza Marine Park. Some of these stations, like Empire Boulevard, Church Avenue and Kings Highway will provide new and easy transfer points to various bus lines through the borough, allowing for riders to easily get where they need to go. This is something the area surrounding Utica Avenue currently doesn't have. In order to get from Avenue N to Herald Square, you would have to take the B100 bus to the B train and that takes over an hour. Just think of how long it might take on weekends or late nights when the B isn't running, and everything else is on a reduced schedule. Poor transit connectivity is what causes people to purchase cars most of the time. Public transportation is meant to reverse that, getting people out of their cars and onto buses and trains. But when it takes over an hour just to get from southern Brooklyn to midtown Manhattan, that just isn't going to happen. And to fix this, we need the Utica Avenue line, because the B46 bus just isn't cutting it. Now the reason I think it should be a two-track line and not a three or four-track line like the Jerome or Eastern Parkway ones is that it just doesn't need to be it. I propose sending only the four train down there, and with there only being one line, you don't need a huge trunk. The four line would also only run 15 trains per hour, so it's not like you can run any type of peak direction express service along it. I think there can definitely be some three-track sections for emergencies and for the possibility of short-turning some trains during rush hour, similar to the BMT Jamaica line. The reason I think it should run elevated is because of the soil under Utica Avenue being very sandy and there being a high water table in the area. Building a subway would cost a fortune, probably even more than phase two of the 2nd Avenue subway, because of the flood protection works that would need to be done to the tunnels. Therefore, I propose an elevated line. We could avoid the high cost of creating a long subway line with extensive flood protection. With this being said, you might bring up the point of the community opposing the construction of an elevated line, and that's always going to be an issue. Whether they think it'll block their views, lower the land value, segregate the area, or the noise argument, there are always going to be people who oppose building elevated subways. But as I said in my LaGuardia Airport video last week, we need to show them that modern elevateds have improved on the previous design, and in order to make these neighborhoods better, we need to stop with the views argument. Now earlier I did say that I propose sending the 4 train down the Utica Avenue line. However, that's with the current design of Rogers Junction on the Eastern Parkway line. Some of you may know of this junction as the death of the IRT, because it is what causes so many delays across the express lines. Long story short, Lexington Avenue Expresses and 7th Avenue Expresses cross in front of each other to reach their respective lines. To fix the issues with the junction, you would need to create a new set of switches and tracks that prevent the different trunks from crossing in front of each other, and then the interline. 
With this, I would send the 2 and 3 to Flatbush Avenue via Eastern Parkway Local, the 4 to New Lots via Eastern Parkway Express, and the 5 to Kings Plaza via Eastern Parkway Express, stopping at Nostrand and Kingston Avenues. Now, the 5 has to run local past Franklin Avenue because the provisions for the Utica Avenue line come off the local tracks at Crown Heights. I'll end up explaining all of the plans for deinterlining the IRT and how beneficial it would be in a future video in the Deinterlining Chronicles series. The Utica Avenue line, like a lot of other proposed subway extensions in New York City, will provide subway access to a current transit desert. This will help tons of people living in the East Flatbush, Flatlands, and Marine Park neighborhoods. Anyway, what do you think about the Utica Avenue line? Tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. And also tell me if you would like to see a companion video to this, where I talk about an extension of the Nostrand Avenue line. If you enjoyed this video and would like to get more from Mystic Transit, like, subscribe, and consider becoming a channel member.